Hi guys, uh, glad to see you again. And uh, today uh, we continue our study MATLAB environment. And uh, today I would like to uh, share with you my experience with automatic uh, weather data processing. Uh, and in this case, we will use aviation weather reporting format METAR for extracting data about current weather. Uh, then we will apply ARHUD METAR to extract, uh, for example, a weather variation for last 10 or 15 days and then try to visualize all of this data and of course in our uh, lovely MATLAB uh, environment. Okay, uh, are you ready to code in MATLAB? That's why let's let's start. First of all, let me introduce a little bit about uh, uh, weather format uh, which we will use in current uh, work. Uh, okay, in aviation. Uh, usually used a METAR digital message which uh, inputs special report format for current weather. Uh, inside uh, of ground facility of each airport we have a specific meteorological ground station. Some of them can operate fully automatically and uh, this meteorological ground station has a huge amount of different sensors which is located around the airfield and uh, around the runway and after current uh, weather measuring this uh, uh, ground weather stations forming a weather report which we called METAR and this weather report will be shared with all airspace users and also with uh, some data processing units around the world. Uh, usually a METAR message uh, has the following format, okay, which you can see here. And uh, this format includes uh, about wind direction data, about speed of wind, then uh, current temperature, then uh, uh, static air pressure at the ground weather stations, and uh, other data about visibility, clouds, and many others, which is important for uh, performing flight. After uh, performing these measurements, uh, which is usually done uh, continuously, and if weather will be significantly change, uh, ground station will issue like special meta messages for special time when current weather has been changed. However, usually meta message is generated uh, hourly or half hour. And uh, after the issue issued a uh, message, uh, ground weather station uh, sent this data to, to the different international weather centers uh, for a cooperative uh, data processing and sharing this data with all other users around the world. Uh, yes, nowadays we have uh, internet connection and Ethernet and it makes easily to share weather reports around the world. And one of the uh, services which, uh, which uses METAR collecting, it is Aviation Web, Aviation Web Center, uh, which is a part of uh, uh, National Oceanic uh, Administration and it's a part of the National Weather Center. The weather 
uh, service center. Okay, and uh, via this resource, we, we can get uh, easy access to different metals. Here we've got interactive map by which we can uh, find uh, ground stations, weather ground stations, which is associated with airports. And for example, if I choose UKBBE airport, then we can click and we can get a uh, current METAR for this uh, airport and uh, we can show that uh, this data is uh, actual. Uh, also, Aviation Weather Center has a description of each ground station, therefore if you go a little bit uh, lower we can find uh, uh, automatic uh, weather ground station data. And uh, here, for example, we've got a good description of all ground stations, which is used in uh, this uh, uh, system. However, uh, I, I will look for UKBB, which is Borisville. Airport, and here you, we can find a um, title, like a long title, identification of this ground station, and also latitude, longitude, and altitude of uh, this ground station in VGS 84 reference frame. Uh, later, we will need this data to visualize uh, ground station location. Uh, also, uh, Aviation Weather Center provides a uh, quite useful tool, uh, which is Text Data Server. It is a specific server which can uh, generate a METAR message in a row and in decoded form. And uh, we can use this data in XML uh, data format. It means that we can easily uh, operate or with the, we can easily interrogate for any uh, METAR identification airport and uh, then can get a reply with uh, XML. Uh, raw data and decoded data. And of course, uh, MATLAB will be helpful for us because uh, we can easily read XML structure and we will get a structured array in uh, our MATLAB uh, workspace. And then we can uh, use this data for visualization, for uh, estimation so, something or analyzing like uh, a global warming problem. It's up to you. Uh, however, today uh, I just would like to show you the basic feature. Uh, therefore, we will uh, try to uh, download some XML files and try to process current weather from Aviation Weather Center. Okay, uh, here we've got a description. Also, we can uh, get not only METAR, we, we can use aviation reports, which uh, we obtain uh, from uh, on board of airplane. We can uh, use TAF uh, data. Uh, TAF it is a forecast, uh, aviation forecast for uh, airspace users. That's why we also can extract for a cut for different uh, airports and uh, use it for current weather data processing. Air segments, uh, G air met, uh, and uh, if we need to get some data about station, uh, ground station location, we can uh, use uh, station info request to get data about. Uh, any uh, weather station within this uh, system. However, in uh, our case, I would like to tell you only 
uh, about metar data processing because there is a current weather report which is uh, quite important for different purposes even for any person if you are living near the airport you can read metar and get actual exactly weather because aviation always uh, should use uh, the most accurate data especially about weather because it's directly connected with the safety of aviation and uh, if we just click uh, examples in Mitar, you will uh, get a list of examples how we can uh, get different METARs for different airports in XML format. And um, in our uh, study, I would like uh, to use time range because uh, we will uh, download a set of METARs. Uh, for, for example, we will use uh, METARs from particular date up to now to build a graph of particular parameters of weather variation. That is useful because uh, based on this graph we can uh, predict uh, by visual which weather will be uh, in two hours, for example. That's why probably this uh, task uh, may be useful for a lot of people, not only for aviation personnel. That's why uh, I will use uh, uh, time range for METAR for particular ground station. Here you can uh, find different variations of uh, interrogation for and interrogation variables for uh, text uh, and uh, server. In our case, we will use this one. If you click on it. Uh, you will see the long glance of uh, interrogation report and here we need to change st station string uh, title to uh, a report which we would like to discuss and in my case I will use uh, Bristol International Airport in Kiev, Ukraine which has ICAO identification code UKDB. Therefore, if I just uh, run this uh, this long uh, link, I will uh, send all of these variables to their uh, text server of Aviation Weather Center, and I got uh, reply in XML format, which includes uh, metars for different weather. Uh, for, for different time. That's why I got raw METAR text and uh, description of uh, this METAR. Then I got a METAR for one hour or half hour later, uh, later, and then so on. That's why I can specify different time period to get a particular uh, METAR in XML format. XML format it is a very useful uh, representation of data because it has particular scheme which you can read in uh, this link which is usually um, placed at the header of any XML and it gives possibility uh, to read structure of this XML file automatically. That's why any programming language has specific libraries uh, to read XML data and then uh, unpack it, if we can call something like that, and uh, getting uh, values in particular variables. And today I would like to show how we can uh, do uh, this uh, data processing in MATLAB. Okay, uh, that's why let let me uh, open my MATLAB uh, just a second. I need to prepare my 
uh, space. That's why, uh, as you see, okay, just a second, okay, we can continue. That's why uh, in my MATLAB environment, uh, I already have uh, created script which called Metar read. Also, uh, I've got uh, a clear folder, new folder for this uh, script because uh, I will need uh, external function which I do not have. That's why I download xml to struct.m from uh, MathWorks because in my MATLAB I do not have a uh, quite uh, good uh, function to read structure because I've got quite old version of MATLAB. That's why I need to use external function for reading uh, uh, structured arrays. And uh, as usual, we will start from uh, we will start coding from uh, preparing uh, MATLAB environment for new data. And of course, uh, we will use uh, CLC command then clear wars to clear uh, our workspace and uh, close all because we will plot a lot of different pictures uh, in different figures. That's why we need to close everything when we run our file. Also, I do not want uh, to, uh, to reach uh, aviation weather server each time when I run my port. That's why uh, I will uh, download automatically XML file with uh, weather reports which I need locally and then uh, I will just uh, read uh, XML structure with the help of XML to struct uh, function. That's why uh, first of all we will need to download automatically uh, weather report uh, file which uh, I would like to process later. That's why I will create variable file name which uh, holds a title of file which uh, I will use and uh, this file will be in my case it will be metar uh, ukbb uh, 2022.xml. Uh, it will be title of uh, uh, it will be title of file which uh, will be created. Then uh, I will introduce some automatic automatic uh, check-in uh, procedure because uh, each time when we run. We, need, we will check if this file is present in uh, our current folder. That's why I will use uh, switch if and then function exist, which uh, check if uh, file uh, name uh, is present in current uh, directory. And also I will specify that this file name is a file. That's why file it is an argument which is property of file. And if it is exist, I just uh, use uh, function XML to uh, struct uh, for reading this file. In my case, it will be variable for file name. Uh, Elsa, Elsa, if we uh, do not have uh, this file, we will use a specific link to uh, download this file. And uh, I will specify a link uh, from uh, Aviation Visit Center. That's why I just copy this link, uh, this URL. And uh, I will change uh, 
the start time of uh, getting this data. That's why uh, if uh, today is the uh, 6th of February, let's uh, get approximately a uh, 10 day period. That's why uh, I will use uh, uh, 25th, 25th of January. That's why I will download uh, all metars between 25th of January and 6th of uh, February. Uh, particular time, it is doesn't matter, however, this time is actual time which uh, I use. And also, I will use data from UKBB airport. Okay, if we have a uh, specified link, then we can uh, use a function uh, web save, web save uh, to save a file name. Download it from our link. And uh, this function, web save, uh, returns for us uh, the path of path and file name of saved file. And uh, then we can use the same function m to read this chart. And uh, if we will be lucky, we will get it. And finally, we will uh, close our switch. Then let's try to run. As you can see uh, in my uh, right corner, corner I've got green uh, color. It means that everything is okay and we can try to run. Let's run. Okay, it takes some time, you see. It means that something is downloading from the web. Waiting, because Probably it takes uh, a little bit more time. And here we are, we've got the results. That's why I, I will open uh, MATLAB and you will see that there is no mistakes. Okay, it's good, it means that everything has been done okay. Also, I will see that in current folder of uh, my MATLAB, I've got new file metar ukbb2022. If I click twice on this file, probably it was not a good idea. Much more better will be just to open it uh, because it will be quite a uh, long uh, file. However, I got it. That's why uh, this file has been opened in uh, text editor of script and you will see quite long uh, uh, file with uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of metars inside raw and uh, already decoded okay uh, let's uh, check uh, what we have in our m file m variable because m it is a result of reading of our structured array. If you click twice on it, you will see that M uh, variable it is a structured array which includes only one structure which called response. That's why, because in XML file we've got the upper level for response uh, field. If we just uh, make a little bit wider of our screen, you will see that uh, here we've got different uh, fields which we have in our XML file. Okay, I already closed it. Uh, however, it doesn't matter. Uh, the most important uh, data is uh, related into the data field and inside of Metal. Here you can see that we've got uh, 589 different metars between these uh, daughters and time. 
And then if you click on different of them, you will get uh, row text of Metar, who you can get it here. Or we can get any other data which uh, we would like to see. For example, current temperature. Okay, it is here. Three uh, degrees of Celsius. Okay, nice. That's why data has been uh, downloaded uh, correctly. Uh, then uh, our XML to struct function can read this uh, big file and we've got our structured data in uh, MATLAB workspace. Then uh, we need to uh, rare save data from structured array to usual arrays and then uh, plotting a lot of graphs of, uh, of weather variation. Uh, let's continue uh, where uh, we have our code. And uh, next, let's create a loop for reading all of uh, METARs in our, in our structured array. In this case, I will use loop variable i, which will change from one to a uh, number of METARs. Uh, I like to use uh, function number of elements because it's like, okay, it's number of elements. And uh, number of metals is, con uh, is uh, false in M structured array. Then you will see in response data metal. That's why we just need to count how many cells here we will have. That's why we just uh, retype response. Then, oh, sorry, response, see, another, then data, and then dot meta. And uh, in this case, we will get a number of elements in meta. If you would like to check, always you can copy and paste in command window and you will get the uh, uh, function numeral um, uh, will count number of elements, in our case, number of cells in this array. Uh, always, if you type 4, we need to add and. And then we just uh, add uh, um, uh, the, some part of script which we would like to repeat continuously in the loop. Uh, first of all, let's read uh, current temperature. I will use identity uh, variable. I will use uh, loop variable as an address identification for uh, matrices of particular weather parameter. That's why time uh, temperature will be equal to string to number because all data in structured array is a string. That's why we need to convert uh, double uh, on numerical data from string to double. That's why I use string to num function to, uh, to convert uh, particular data from uh, structured array. That's why I will use uh, m response then uh, data, uh, then uh, metal. Uh, then we will need to specify which uh, array we would like to use because we've got one, just a second, one long string. That's why we specify first row and uh, each column because each column will be related to a different metal. And uh, if you click on any of them, you will get that here we've got identification of different parameters. And if you talk about temperature in Celsius, we've got temp uh, dash uh, e. That's why here I would like to specify temp uh, dash uh, p. Uh, however, it is not only this one, because if you click on this one, you will got text data. 
and this takes data cache value, three uh, degrees of Celsius. That's why uh, here we also need to specify text. Okay, uh, that's all for uh, reading particular value. Also, please take attention that the next time and all time when we run this code, we will not uh, access internet to download the data because we will uh, go in this uh, way. We just read data from downloaded file. And in this case, we reduce uh, workload of textual server because we need to be uh, polite for server equipment. Thank you very much for Aviation Weather Center and please do not uh, create a uh, different troubles for these servers. The best thing uh, getting one of the data and then process with this data many times. Do not uh, interrogate with server each second because it's, uh, it's not a good behavior for any software developer. That's why uh, in this case I can just run it again. Uh, actually, I would like to check if uh, T operates uh, well. That's why it, it also takes some time. However, we will not uh, download it. Download, we just uh, reading this uh, textual data. And we've got variable T, which includes uh, temperature in Celsius. Uh, very well, it works. Uh, then we can repeat uh, all of that for other important parameters of weather which we can uh, extract from uh, our XML file. Uh, I do not want to. I do not want to retype all of them. That's why I just copy. Uh, next, let's uh, try to. Download static pressure. In my case, it will be PS, and in uh, Metal, the all all team in HG. That's why I just need to change uh, this one to all uh, team in HG, and we have got this data. Then uh, I will copy this one and paste. Next parameter probably will be dew point. Point. Uh, dew point it is important uh, parameter because uh, it uh, talk uh, about uh, the temperature when we will have ice. That's why it is important thing. Then uh, wind direction, Vd probably will be wind direction, and uh, in our uh, in our structured array, uh, wind direction called wind uh, degrees degrees. Yep, I got it. Uh, then I would like to. Uh, okay, sorry, it is wind direction, and uh, next one will be wind speed. Wind speed here is just a uh, wind uh, speed in knots. Okay, uh, then. Then uh, also uh, we will read current time, and to do that uh, I will use variable time team T I M, which uh, holds current time. I will use something like that, uh, and uh, it will be observation time. That's why. Right. Observation time. 
and because it will be a string data, then we will need to uh, read this string data and then convert it to data time format. That's why I will introduce uh, team tool and I will apply data time function which will uh, convert textual data to their particular input uh, data time format. And then uh, for reading uh, data, I will use uh, reg x reg regular expression, uh, which will uh, include uh, team from i uh, and then we need to specify mask in our case we need to uh, delete word uh, or, or letters tz from report and replace them to simple minus and then we can uh, read uh, this data by specifying input format. And input format will be the following uh, year, then uh, months with uh, zero in the beginning, that's why we use capital months, then uh, days then uh, hours, then minutes, then, oh, sorry, 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 here it should be semicolon, minutes, uh, and second, and then uh, minus again. Also, at the end, I will use something like that, and uh, we can uh, try to run our code to check if uh, all uh, readings and formats uh, has been uh, corrected, has been correctly entered, because type typing may include some uh, errors. And uh, let's look what we have. Okay, we've got all our variables. If we click into the time team 2 we will see that it is a data time variable and it holds uh, data and time for each uh, our measurements then we've got variable t uh, pressure static pressure however this pre uh, static pressure i would like to transform from uh, millimeters or Oh, okay, from inch per Ag to millimeters of Ag. In this case, I will use APC probably variable and I will use TPS okay, uh, variable uh, multiply with uh, 33 dot 86. In this case, we will transform to millimeters of, uh, of Ag. Okay, uh, probably that's all. Uh, I would like just to apply the lightest uh, line in command window because I would like to uh, avoid resimulation. And then uh, let's begin plotting our data to get visualization what we got. First of all, uh, I will use new section of my code because uh, I will uh, just I like just to uh, rerun on only some part of code to improve uh, computation performance. And of course, we will create new figure uh, by figure function. Then we will specify color of uh, the background of background of our new window and it will be white because it is very useful just to to use it 
then uh, I, we will specify name, sorry, name property. And uh, first of all, let's indicate a location of uh, our ground uh, meteorological station. That's why first our figure, it will be location. Uh, in my case, it is UKBB uh, weather uh, station. station. Uh, to do that, uh, I will use uh, because um, location of the station will go in latitude and longitude. That's why I will use build in. Uh, uh, environment in mapping to box of MATLAB, world map. That's why I will use just world uh, map function. Then, uh, because I will, I, I would like to specify only one point to understand where it locates in the globe. That's why I will show world. Uh, however, we can choose Europe, Asia, and many others. Then we need to specify what kind of data you would like to indicate. And in my case, uh, post uh, lines uh, will be enough to identify location. And then uh, we will use function plot m to plot uh, cost latitude and uh, cost longitude. Okay, and uh, then I need to specify coordinates of uh, my ground station location. To do that, I will go to the aviation weather center, uh, to the beginning of the page, then go to station table, and then try to find uh, UKBB. Okay, I got it. And I've got uh, coordinates of latitude and longitude. That's why uh, I will uh, copy this data. Okay, I don't need to copy it okay. because I will use variable latitude to specify 50.20 uh, north uh, latitude will be with the positive sign. And uh, longitude will be uh, 30 dot uh, 56, and also east uh, longitude uh, will comes with a positive sign. If you we'll get north, uh, if you we'll get uh, uh, west and south, you need uh, to change sign of latitude and longitude. And uh, then uh, I will use a uh, geo show function. Geo uh, show function to specify ground station location. Then latitude, longitude. Then uh, we can specify marker sign. Marker. And uh, let it be just a circle. In MATLAB it is all. Then we can specify properties of color, uh, let it be red, and uh, due to uh, great scale, because it will be the whole world, uh, we can specify marker size. Marker And uh, we can set up uh, near the 10. Okay. I will use 10. And also, we need to specify that it will not be line. It will be only point. point. Uh, that's why uh, I will put display type and specify uh, uh, type, which is point, not line. And uh, then uh, we can uh, then we can uh, specify title of our uh, ground station by text m function. 
and we will put uh, the attitude. Then we will add some values to shift a little bit text from the uh, central sign of this uh, uh, of this uh, ground station. Then uh, we can specify a text which we would like to uh, put. It will be UKBB. Then let's specify also a color which will be not red. Uh, however, black we will use. And uh, also we can specify font size property font uh, size uh, which will be 9 and if you would like uh, we can specify horizontal or we zone tall alignment which may, may be left uh, center or right in our case, it will be left. Okay, and uh, finally, as usual, uh, I will put title of uh, our picture because if someone would like to save it, uh, uh, he's always will uh, have a description what we got. Uh, then let's try to run this section. That's why I just clicked Control Enter, and we are waiting, waiting, and we got the following results. I will increase uh, the picture. You will see the glow here. You've got pointed our ground station and specified UKVB. And the blue one it is a coarse line of uh, different metrics which help us to identify where this ground station located. Uh, let's uh, continue. I just uh, maybe close this picture and uh, open new section. Then let's make a visualization of each parameter. Um, which we read from our uh, XML file. In this case, I will use the same figure. And first of all, let's play with the temperature variation. That's why temp, uh, temp, temperature variation uh, in UKDB. And in this case, we can use just simple Cartesian plot uh, where we need to specify data time which is uh, team 2 uh, and uh, temperature T. Also, we will use a solid line with a red color and uh, line with properties. Also, I would like to specify uh, line uh, width property will be equal to 2. By default it is 1, that's why I just uh, make it more bold in uh, the picture. And uh, I like grid on to make uh, possible to see what's going on. Uh, then also good behavior to put all uh, description of each axis. That's why I will use X label, which will be just uh, time. Then uh, I will use Y label, which will be uh, temperature. Okay, in my case, T will be enough. However, I will specify that it will be in degrees of Celsius. Celsius, uh, in order to specify uh, degrees, I will use hashtag uh, or special charm uh, silk circle one circle. And uh, also, let's put title as well, which will repeat 
uh, name of our event. Okay, let's run. And we've got uh, the following picture. Uh, also, you can see that uh, data time uh, makes possible to easily visualize visualize their data stamps. That's why it is great because you just put time to and we got uh, time or date. It's uh, up to scale which we've got. If I just would like to zoom a little bit, okay, you will see that your time will be appeared. That's why it is a great in MATLAB. That's why you do not need to play with numbers. Uh, MATLAB will do everything automatically. Uh, it is just uh, simple uh, double values or it is data timestamp. And uh, I see I've got a mistake here because it is connected with X label. And probably in uh, my MATLAB also I've got undefined function over evil x level. Yes, of course, because it should be level. Uh, then I will close it and uh, let's continue. Wait just a second, where it is? Yep, this here. Next, uh, let's copy all of that and uh, do the same for G point. That's why the view point uh, variation in UKDB. View point also I will copy and paste here and also I will change T to uh, how we called it? DP, I think. Yeah. Uh, D point. DP. That's why I will put DP. DP and uh, I just like to change maybe red to green one. Then uh, let's copy again this data and uh, try to print static pressure. That's why it will be static uh, pressure variation in UKPP. Also copy it, paste here. Uh, then uh, it will be uh, not static pressure, it will be static pressure in, in particular format. That's why I will use APC, APS, and let it be blue, for example, color it, and it will be pressure. And uh, I will use a lower case, which we can specify like that, and it will be probably static pressure. Uh, static pressure. Okay, let's go next. Uh, next, let's print wind speed. Uh, that's why it will be wind speed, speed variation in UKDB. Then copy paste. Wind speed variation in UKPD. Uh, if you remember, it is wind speed. However, we will need to convert uh, wind speed from knots uh, from knots to meters meters per second. Uh, this conversion means uh, let let me check. That's why uh, usually I use something like that. Uh, knots to meter per second I already had. That's why one knot is equal particular value of meters per second. That's why I just copy it uh, and uh, multiply with uh, my matrix units. And uh, I, I need to change uh, Y label to uh, Probably velocity of wind. Oh, sorry. Wind. What am I doing? Wind. Wind speed. Yes. And
and uh, this value will be in meters per second. Uh, next, uh, next, let's uh, plot wind direction as well. Uh, do the same. However, it will be wind uh, direction. That's why uh, we need to change speed to direction. And uh, plot wind direction. Wind direction. Wind direction. Uh, however, yes, wind direction is counted from uh, heading. That's why it will be heading angle. That's why heading. I will put it for Y label. And wind direction will be in uh, degrees. Also, I will use a special uh, letter, uh, which is circle. And uh, we've got everything that uh, we need. However, in MATLAB we have quite uh, well uh, function which called rows. MATLAB rows, uh, which help us to build uh, rows in this diagram in MATLAB. Just a second. Uh, here is a help of MATLAB and rows function from data angle give us uh, angular histogram which help us to understand uh, the direction of wind during some particular time. That's why uh, I would like to try to use Rose diagram to plot uh, this, uh, this one, this data. That's why I will use wind direction uh, histogram. Or you KBB. Or you KBB. The same for title. And uh, here I will use rows. Uh, also, in this case, we do not need uh, time. However, we will need uh, uh, angular data, data in uh, radian. Uh, however, this got in degrees of wind direction. That's why back to radians function help us to convert the whole matrix of P from degrees to radians. Uh, also, I do not want to specify anything here. Uh, however, we can specify how many uh, beams uh, we will get in the total picture. Also, X label and Y label we do not need. That's why I just deleted. Okay, that's all. I think it will be quite uh, useful. That's why let's try to run it and you will see how Rose's histogram looks like. Okay, it looks like this one. That's why we, we can see that at the most time uh, wind direction is approximately 840 40 degrees. Mostly. However, we need to remember that zero it is a hidden. It is uh, north direction. Okay, actually it is quite difficult to understand uh, because uh, zero is located uh, in our like reality to the east. However, in real, zero is directed to the north. That's why we need to rotate this histogram in 90 degrees and then rotate in 100 degrees to get like a visual understanding what's going on with this direction. However, for data visualization, it's 
If you would like to uh, fill up and play with uh, multiple properties, you can use uh, polar histogram in MATLAB. Uh, uh, polar histogram function, which has been introduced since 2015, and you can plot something like that. You can see that these graphs will be much more spectacular, and you will get uh, more uh, more uh, input parameters for uh, visualization of uh, obtained data. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to use a polar plot to represent uh, our uh, wind velocity and wind direction uh, in their like live uh, changing histogram. That's why uh, we will use. Uh, polar plot, polar plot, uh, for polar plot of wind direction histogram, of wind direction variation maybe, variation in UTVP ground station. Uh, then I will copy it and use the same for title, and uh, I will use uh, polar plot. Also here we need to change uh, degree to radians for wind. And then we need to use uh, wind speed in meters per second. Uh, however, in this case uh, polar plot looks like usual plot. That's why I will use uh, red line, solid line with all or so-called as a marker. And if I run it, okay, you will see that uh, how wind uh, has been changed during this time. And uh, we can see that in most case, wind is uh, in UPDB airport is directed from there. Okay, uh, let me uh, visualize, visualize it in my mind. It will be directed from the east to west. Yes, zero, it is a hidden. Then we use clockwise size, side, and it means that here it is uh, east, and here it is the west. It is north, it is south. That's why wind mostly uh, directed from the uh, east to the west. And the uh, velocity of this uh, wind usually uh, fluctuated uh, in the level, level of 6 meters per second. And probably this is all. Uh, finally, let's run all our code again to see what we've got. I will run it. Uh, we are waiting for reading a structured array. Also, please remember that we do not need to download it multiple times because we already saved uh, this data in our simple variable. And uh, I've got my data. Okay, first one, it is uh, final load, just a second, then uh, wind direction histogram, then uh, wind direction variation, then wind speed, okay, just a second, then static pressure, okay, sorry. I will begin from the beginning. Okay. That's my first figure. It was location of ground station. Then second one, it was uh, temperature. Mm -hmm. Then uh, 
then uh, so it was, it was viewpoint was one it was static pressure then uh, fifth one it's a wind speed variation then uh, fifth it is wind duration then seven it is the angular histogram and finally it is the wind direction variation uh, therefore uh, using all of these graphs help us to understand what's going on with uh, our weather uh, for particular ground station. Let me second to, to prepare everything to more suitable for. Just a second. Okay, maybe I will just uh, leave representation of this data. Which is possible here. Yeah. Okay, something like that. Okay, uh, what we uh, have here uh, from current uh, task today. We interrogate with a remote textual server in XML file, then uh, we save some XML file locally in order to did not provide uh, uh, extension, uh, external world workload of textual server. That's why we download XML file and then we use it locally for parsing. Uh, then we read uh, the structured data with, uh, uh, with XML to struct file function. If you do not have this function, however, you've got uh, more advanced MATLAB. Uh, you can use uh, different another different functions uh, to read structured array. And then we uh, build a geolocation for our uh, ground uh, weather station picture to understand uh, where it is located. Then we've got temperature variation for the last uh, 10 days. Uh, then we build a dew point variation in Kiev. That's why you will see that it is going from zero up to minus 10. Uh, and it will be a little bit different from uh, like temperature variation in UTP. Then we investigate static pressure variation. That's why we can see that it will be uh, like reduced a little bit. However, uh, for the last time, it has increased a little bit. Then wind speed variation is not exceed 10 meters per second. Or it was only once uh, approximately in January 13. Uh, and then finally the direction variation you also can see that in most case it is uh, in the like uh, in the west direction. However to better understand uh, what does it mean with the direction 
usually uh, people used uh, polar plots and rose histogram. That's why uh, rose histogram uh, or polar histogram indicate for us uh, how often wind direction has been used for uh, for wind. And a uh, polar plot indicate us a uh, relation of wind speed in meters per second from 0 to 10. This is a combination of, uh, this combination of uh, data. That's why, probably that's all. Uh, thank you for uh, working with uh, me. I hope this coding uh, sample will be useful for you uh, because it is not only about reading metar data because it, it means that you can use any uh, XML engine uh, and you can re read any data, any XML file and then visualize it in the different form with like uh, 30 minutes in MATLAB. That's why everyone can just uh, get any data and vi visualize uh, in maximum uh, of this data uh, during the short period of time. And in this case, you do not need to be advanced uh, in coding because uh, MATLAB reduced uh, required knowledge of coding to minimum because everyone and everything is already in MATLAB libraries. All functions, all like uh, uh, all the best math knowledge from math soft is uh, already inside of uh, inside of your MATLAB environment. That's why just use it, and you will not have a uh, problem with. Uh, any data visualization. If it is geo data, if it is uh, simple Cartesian data, if it is timed array, uh, as we used uh, here, data time array, because all data is connected by data time. And usually it is a problem because we, we will need to convert from data time to their particular double, and then we need to indicate these double values uh, at the specific uh, axis in MATLAB, you, you do not need to uh, spend uh, a lot of time with it. And also, uh, why I love uh, why I like MATLAB uh, because uh, it is very flexible. We can use simple plot function, and it will automatically understand what kind of data data you will put in x and y axes. And then, if it is, for example, time scale, it will zoom in time scale. That's why you do not need to think if it is years, months, days, minutes, seconds, uh, so on. You just uh, plot and uh, leave all of this uh, difficult stuff for mass soft and specific uh, function inside. That's why MATLAB it is a great thing for fixing. That's why uh, for today I would like to say you, thank you for being with me. Uh, I hope it was uh, useful for you. If you have any question, uh, I will be glad uh, to answer on it. Please write in the comments for these videos. Uh, I will try to answer for all of them. Also, you can visit my website, uh, astroomov.com, where you can find uh, a lot of codes and uh, specific uh, special my functions for aviation data processing, including entire decoding. That's why thank you very much for being with me today. Uh, uh, I was glad uh, to see you again and uh, hope it was useful. Uh, good luck. Quote uh, a lot. Do not be afraid. And uh, do not spend too much time in coding.
because Matlab and Matlab do it uh, for you with the maximum speed. Okay, thank you for watching me. See you again uh, uh, in a particular class with the uh, addition data processing. Thank you very much.